Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Colcast, the podcast for all of us. I'm XLJ, the OG, and yes, it is time, yet wonderful time of year again, where we are talking horror films that we love to do here on Cole TV and Colcast, as Halloween week has begun here, and this is our... Next episode in the Horror Effects series. It's the Horror Effects Part 4. And we have a very special guest with us on this episode, this year's episode. You know her. You love her from PW60 and from TikTok, Wreckage, everywhere else. The beautiful Cake Face Carly. How are you? I am doing fantastic. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty damn awesome. Like, obviously, because you're here. And because we're talking horror films, so... Oh, absolutely. Yes. I'm excited. Uh, I am, too. I am, too. I always love doing these episodes, like, but this year is going to be a really fun one. Because I think just to kick it off, I mean, like, that's kind of like one of the things we really bonded over when, you know, we were first talking to each other and stuff too so it was like mm-hmm. it was like it was like wrestling and horror films it's like yeah yes. absolutely it, it was funny because not only just like not just within wrestling but the sub subgenre of wrestling of just gcw that was so cool but then to really peel back at, back and like realize that how much you love horror movies and like we have some of the same favorites it just was like mind-boggling to me so I love that. Yeah, me too. It was, uh, yeah, I was like, okay, yep, she's she's pretty fucking awesome. So, <laughs> but um, I want to ask you, like, wh- what, like, just right off the top of your head, like, I, because I, I know you have so many favorites here, but like, when I say, let me put it to you this way, all right, when I say horror films, like, what is some of the first ones that instantaneously come to your mind? It's like, okay, I gotta watch this, I gotta watch that, especially this time of year around Halloween. Um, I mean, honestly, at first, anything Stephen King, um, mainly because for me, that was what really got me into horror movies in the first place as a wee little creep. (laughs) But, you know, just starting with like The Shining and, you know, I told you this, getting into the Children of the Corn series at a young age and, you know, watching Stephen King's It, The Langoliers, I mean, Carrie, Christine, anything Stephen King would be something like if someone said, hey, I want to watch a horror movie. It's like, hey, look up Stephen King. Pick one. You'll be happy. Let's go. Um, Besides that. I want to, but real quick, though, you mentioned Children of the Corn, and you told me something very interesting, like how you started that series. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Which I find fascinating. Yeah, so... It was crazy because, I mean, around this time, it was where, you know, Blockbuster was still around. And kids, if you're watching this, Blockbuster was a place where you can get movies from. And sometimes even on VHS, that's what I got, VHS. Those are the big hunky tapes. You don't see those around anymore. But anyway, um, it was when Blockbuster was around. And it was around the time, too, I didn't really know what Roman numerals were because I was young. I think I was seven maybe getting into this series and so i ended up watching the sixth one first and i was like oh this one's kind of weird and then my mom had pointed out she's like you know i think you watched the last one now you got to go back and i was like oh okay so then i went back watched one through five and <laughs> yeah so that's how i got into the children of the corn series which I think that speaks volumes. If you saw the the sixth one and you're like, you know what? I'm kind of intrigued by this. I'm going to watch the rest. Yeah. Which is crazy because I feel like the sixth one, now that I think about it, is probably one of my least favorite ones. Right. Yeah. It's, but, yeah. Which is crazy because yeah. after talking to you, I was like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I guess they did make that many of those. It's like, damn. But yeah. That's, that's the thing with horror films. Like, there's so many damn franchises with so many damn sequels. Like, oh, it, yeah. It, it's just nuts. Um, but yeah, yeah, I agree with like we talked about this too with Stephen King flicks, you know. Uh, Maximum Overdrive for me is definitely one that's always stuck out, uh, even though a lot of people kind of harp on that one. Um, definitely Pet Cemetery and Children of the Corner yeah. right up there. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, man. Just like, oh, there, there's so many good Stephen King ones. And you can't, even though like the, ser- the, the mini series are long and stuff, but man, there's some really good ones like 
the stand is stupid long, but it's, it's a pretty entertaining series, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're just going to have to spend a whole day watching it pretty much or two days because it's like freaking. <laughs> yeah. Like to give you an idea, kids, of like when you wanted to rent this back in the day, it was like a four pack VHS because they couldn't contain all of the series on just one VHS. And I remember seeing that in Blockbuster. I'm like, my God, mom, what is all this? It's like, yeah, yeah. See, that's one movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? <laughs> I can remember too, like the hype for like that, as well as like other Stephen King series, like as a kid, like when they would air the commercials and stuff on like ABC or where NBC, whatever the hell was airing it. And right. it was like they hyped that stuff up. It was like the Tommy Knockers and the Langoliers and all that stuff. Yes. The Langoliers you, creeped the hell out of me as a kid. I, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. But have you went back and watched it in like recent years though? It's been a while, and I don't know. Maybe it's like I have this like hidden fear to maybe go back and watch it, even though I have seen so many horror movies. But it's, I don't know why. It's just the the whole story behind it, and the one guy just ripping the paper slow, and just such a creepy movie, such a crazy concept. Well, if you go, I me personally, if you go back and watch it, like if as far as the the cgi if you want to call it that it's like oh my god this is fucking terrible but it's just <laughs> right like, for for what it is it's just like you know yeah i mean it's a it's a tv mini series or made for tv movies so you know i mean they did what they could but but yes the stephen stephen king so many great ones what's some of your other like uh great ones that you love um well uh franchise wise obviously I'm wearing it. My favorite like slasher franchise is Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre would probably be a close second. Yeah. Um, and Halloween. Yeah. But um, I like that. I love paranormal movies. I like possession movies. I love gore movies. I mean, surprise, surprise there. Surprise, but, um, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But um with specific movies, um, I like watching Rob Zombie movies, especially House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, I don't mind some of his other ones. I thought Lords of Salem was pretty spooky, even though it was very a predictable story. Like you kind of knew what was going to be happening throughout the whole movie, but it was still kind of creepy. Um, Thirty One, uh, eh. yeah. But um, uh, what did you think of his uh his interpretation of the Halloween series? Because he did a couple Halloween flicks. Yeah, honestly, I didn't mind them. I liked seeing the story, the backstory with Michael and stuff like that. Does it replace John Carpenter's? Hell no. But I liked his interpretation of it. I feel like Rob Zombie's a very creative mind. Sometimes people get his mind. Some people don't. Um, like, for example, like when he did the his version of the monsters, I feel like it was cute just because of the story, how he did with Lily and Herman meeting and everything. But would I go back and watch it like a second or third time? Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah, I like Rob Zombie movies. I like his the Halloween series is all right. Um, yeah, I think I'm okay with, with the Halloween series that he did. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not too, it, it, it's for what it is. It's fine. I think like, I mean, me personally, I'm not, I, I love the first Halloween, but I'm not a mate. Like that's not one of my absolute favorite series. I mean, I, yeah. I like it, but you know, it's just like, there's other series I would put ahead of that as far as like that. I enjoy more in all honesty. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, I like that Malcolm McDowell was in both uh, remakes of the uh, Halloween movies as he was part of uh, Clockwork Orange and stuff. I enjoy his work very, very much. Oh, yeah. Malcolm McDowell is a tremendous actor. Um, yes. I, it's funny because it's like everybody always thinks Clockwork Orange and stuff. But the first thing I always think of when it comes to Malcolm McDowell, this is funny. I always think of that episode he did of Tales from the Crypt. Oh my like god, yeah. Yeah, where he's like the vampire. Yes. And he's like working at the blood bank and stuff. 
Wow. Memory unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> Holy there you shit. go. There you that's go. That's crazy. Ah, and that that's another one, too. Tales from the Crypt. I I like one of our very first episodes we ever did of Cold Cast was on uh Tales from the Crypt. I absolutely adored that series. Yeah. Like, I still have the whole set on DVD. Watch every single episode this time of year. Although you get towards the end, like the last season's kind of a little bit of a hard watch, but there's still a bunch of good stuff in there. I get what you're saying. I feel that way about the Twilight Zone, like the original Twilight ah. Zone. God, I there's just something about it that I'll still go back and watch a few episodes here and there just because it's still so eerie, even with that being that time period and it, it's still really well done and everything. Yeah, Twilight Zones, I think, and that's the cool thing about, like, I think with a lot of horror stuff is, like, a lot of it can still hold up to this day, depending on, yeah. on like, how, how you're feeling it. Like, the you youngins out there, you may look at, like, uh, something like the Twilight Zone or a Hitchcock flick or something and just be like, oh, you know, it's just, the, there's not enough blood or whatever, this, that, and the other. It was like, the thing is, you didn't need that shit back in the day. It was no. all about the suspense. It was all about the about the build like um uh speaking of hitchcock were you were you a, a big hitchcock fan you ever watched some of his stuff i did i did like alfred hitchcock um also another random thing god i can't remember what was called but my mom had recorded a bunch of them and like kind of like saved them throughout time but it was like a radio show of like suspense stories Ooh. oh my god i for the life of me, of course, I can't remember right now what it was, but it was just some crazy stories that literally it's like you're right in front of the radio. Like, and again, kids, these are on little cassettes. Remember when I brought up VHSs earlier? Imagine if it was on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, which you probably don't know what that is either, kids. But anyway, you go a little bit smaller. That's a cassette. Those go in radios and boom boxes. <laughs> What's boom box, cake What's face Carly? <laughs> Well, that plays music. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God! Ah, uh, yes, yes. Our uh, our demographic, like, hopefully, uh, hopefully, we can teach <laughs> the youngins, you know, about all this and that. Laser disc, CDI. Anyways, um, you know, yeah. speaking of another movie that, like, from like an older time and stuff like that, that I really actually enjoy. It was like one of the original, like like House on Haunted Hill type movies, but it wasn't House on Haunted Hill. It was called A Haunting. Okay. And it was it was actually directed by the same guy that did West Side Story. Oh, no shit. And, oh, God, I can't remember the woman's name that was the main character, but it had the same premise as, like, House on Haunted Hill, but it was just a smidge different. But to this day, it's one of, like, the coolest suspense thriller type movies that I've seen, and I just, I love it. I love that it's in black and white. And yeah, that's another one of those in my like favorites that I will like, oh yeah, you got to watch this one, especially for people who aren't a fan of like blood and gore and really just want to like tap into horror movies a little bit. Go watch a haunting, go watch a haunting or is it the haunting? One of the two. <laughs> I'll put it in the comments. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Wikipedia that shit, kids. You can Wikipedia at least that shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I love, and that's one thing I love too is like how, like, you know, we both kind of ha have a ton of similar interests, like within the genres, within the genres of horror films yeah. too. Like, I'm a huge fan of like the older films too. Like, and speaking of which, I think we got to talk about this was like one of the coolest things where it was like instantly like, okay, yep, yep. Uh, it was uh, the Universal Movie Monsters. Yes. Love them, but somehow. We both, our favorite ones is like something that like isn't a lot of people's favorites, but I think it is to a certain right. extent. But, you know, usually when people talk Universal Monsters, they think Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, not us. Oh, no, 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 no. Because we think Creature from the Black Lagoon. Fuck yeah. Oh, so yeah. Tell me, tell me why you love that so much. I felt like because... When I was a kid and was introduced to the Universal Monster movies and stuff, you know, you didn't really, like, as you said, you don't really hear that one first. You're going to get Bela Lugosi's Dracula. You're going to get Boris Karloff. You're, you're going to get either the Wolfman or Frankenstein, Invisible Man even. But 
Creature from the Black Lagoon, the first time I ever saw it, it was, I don't know why, but it was just so captivating to me. I love that it took place like on this boat and like just the, the creature himself. And I don't know. It was just something about it that was like, huh, this is different. And I really, really like it. Yeah. You got to love the gill man. So gill yeah, man. it was, it was literally one of those moments, seriously, where it was just like, what's your favorite, like uh universal monster <laughs> creature from Black Lagoon? Instead of did we Good just become best friends, we just became boyfriend girlfriend. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Pretty much. That's exactly what happened. But yeah, I I couldn't agree with you more. I a creature from Black Lagoon. It's uh, just every bit of it from the score to to the practical effects of it. The Gill Man looked like amazing, especially for like yeah. that time frame. And uh, just the story itself. Oh, so good. Everything about Creature is amazing. Like, and that's the thing too. And thank God for this, in my opinion, is that's something I don't think has really been remade or bastardized or anything. Uh, I mean, there was a sequel. Make sure I remake that shit. I will and fight fuck it some... up royally. Like, yeah, don't just yes. let it be. Yeah, it be. Like, uh, uh, don't touch it. Don't touch. No touchy. <laughs> you you can make a million Dracula movies. You can make a million Frankenstein's, but you're not. Don't touch creature from Black Lagoon. Yeah, let don't have... fucking leave that alone. I, yes. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that we really kind of was like, oh, okay, this is fucking awesome. Is like your favorite uh, series, horror series. Yes. Which happens to be the Evil Dead trilogy. Let's go. Let's go. I think what made me really love, especially. I like I like all of the trilogy. Um, the reason I really like the first one was just the story behind the first one that Sam Raimi only had like a hundred grand, which I mean, and now and even back then too. What was it like nineteen eighty that it, they had made? Yeah, the first one? yeah. But um, that wasn't a lot of money to work with, and I mean Whoa. for that. And that being his first movie and him and Bruce Campbell. Do you know like, the whole story on behind that? Like how that came to be and stuff out of curiosity? A little bit. Because it's it's fascinating to me. Like yeah. so it's essentially, you know, Sam Raimi and his his buddies who grew up filmmaking and stuff, like in his backyard, they did like a little super what was what called a super eight camera. And they right. would, they would literally film movies in their backyard all the time all summer. That's all they did. Uh, so then it was like, okay, we, we want to do a movie. Uh, and it just so happened. It's like, okay, the easiest genres to really do at that time was kind of horror because I mean, everybody was doing horror. Right. Um, so they literally, uh, how they financed the movie is they went to literally local businesses and, and different things there in the, uh, the Michigan area to pretty much get the financing for the movie. Right. Uh, and pretty much all the stuff, all the money was really put into like the practical effects of it because all the actors were just local theater actors yeah. from, uh, I think, Michigan State, I want to say, because I think it was like a lot, of, a lot of it happened in East Lansing. Yeah, I, I think believe. you're right. Um, but yeah, so like all the actors really, and outside of Bruce, of course, uh, were really just like kind of local actors. And when, and what they did, what was fascinating with it is like how they, um, once they got done making and editing and the movie was done, they did like a premiere there in their hometown. Uh, I think they did a premiere in Detroit, but then they pretty much was just shopping it around like at cans and stuff, just like everybody else does. But that's, that's where it got picked up. Uh, and I think the biggest thing that helped them was um, Stephen King writing a review on it, just putting it over as like one of the scariest movies he's ever seen. And it was just like, Oh shit, let's go. Right. So, yeah. And it was just crazy. It's funny because if you read like the what all the actors went through for that movie and like, yeah, <laughs> just with the practical effects and with all the like the gore and the makeup and like the contact lenses and just like just the physicality mm -hmm. they had to go through for that damn movie. Uh, but yeah. it is literally it's a masterpiece when it comes to horror films. It's, it's one of the greatest horror films ever made. Yeah, I I absolutely agree with that. I just think for the time period and the concept and just 
the little shots that they would have of, of this entity in the forest, just weaving through the trees. And it, I mean, it still tests, you know, stands the test of time now of having that still eeriness behind it and not being like, oh, well, even with, you know, with its effects and whatever, it's, it's corny as fuck. It's like, no, it's still eerie. Like, yeah, you that know, shit's going to hold up like after we're gone. You oh my God, I mean? absolutely. Like, that, like, that's going to hold up for a, a lifetime. Right. Cause I mean, uh, you know, I was, I told you I was watching it the other day and everything while we were talking and, it was just like some of the scenes still are like, God, it gave me goosebumps. Like the scene after Shara comes out of the woods and they're playing cards. And while she's not looking, she's reading off every card that they have. And I'm like, Oh my God. Like, just is so creepy. Like I, I love the original. I love the second one. I think even though they kind of switched the story a little bit in the second one and didn't really mention like the rest of the friends, it was just Ash and his girlfriend, like in the second one that they really focused on. But just like the sheer chaos of that movie oh, yeah. was phenomenal. <laughs> Ash chasing his possessed hand that's flipping him off, like having a fight this house. Him going crazy after, you know, the deer head is talking to him on the wall. <laughs> like, absolutely amazing. And then, of course, Army of Darkness. Oh, yeah. Which is absolutely groovy. <laughs> groovy, baby. Groovy. Um, the thing is, with two, I think a lot of people will tell you that the second one is the best one. It almost feels like two was like, okay, now we got more of a budget and we can tell the story. But really, as great as two is, to me... And I think everybody would agree what makes the Evil Dead series so special, it's Bruce Campbell. It's that oh, character. For Ash. Sure. Like in that that like in the first one, it's like you don't really he's just playing the straight guy. You know, you don't really get like who the character truly becomes until you get to the second one. Yeah. And then by the time you get to three, it's like full blown like here we are. This is this <laughs> Shop is Shop Smart. This is, Shop S Smart. <laughs> This here is my boomstick. <laughs> like just everything about Army of Darkness is like I, I it, and the thing is too, if you really wanted to break down this trilogy, like each one of the films is so different. Yeah. Even though it's within the same like you know series, it's still it's just like each one is completely different. You get to Army of Darkness, and it's not really scary per se, as it's more so like a uh just a spectacle and like a, a comedy of sorts you know yeah like uh more of a more of along the sci-fi ish side i mean there don't be wrong there's still definitely horror elements to I, it i can definitely agree with you though with that it definitely leans more sci-fi than horror and of course comedy yeah yeah a lot of the comedy uh let me ask you this aren't with army of darkness i'm sure you're you've seen it over the years but they're is an alternative ending to Army of Darkness. Have you ever seen the alternative ending? I've seen it once. Okay. Very, very long time ago, like about 10 years ago, I've seen it. What What were your thoughts on that in comparison to what the original ending was? I don't know. I liked it. I mean, of course, it's just like how the original ending was. I mean, of course. You got to put a bow on it. things, right? Oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. But, but it... it for the character, it is kind of ironic, like yes. Ash wakes up like way into the future. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That it was cool, but of course I prefer the original ending. Yeah. I mean they're both they're both great. So Oh, for sure. Um, let's talk about this here for a minute. Like, what do you think of the uh the new Evil Dead series? Um uh, the, the quote unquote remakes that they did. Um, okay, so the one that they did in 2013 i felt they did a fantastic job now it is polarizing because i remember during that time period there were some people oh this shit's whack like some of the special effects in here are bullshit i didn't like some of the lines i mean yes and some of the lines are cheesy like because you said you haven't seen it right no i've that seen you... that one but it was the sequel when there's oh, sequel? Saw evil dead rises you saw that one is or, that the was uh, no? I just saw the evil. De I saw whatever the first one was, which I thought was just the Evil Dead. Okay, then yeah, yeah. yeah. We're talking the about one the you're talking about, but they made they made a sequel after that, right? Evil Dead Rises. 
That I wouldn't even consider that one a sequel. That oh, is okay. its whole different entity. Okay. I mean, it was okay. scary. I don't consider it an Evil Dead movie. It was scary as shit. But I feel like the one that they did in 2013 was absolutely phenomenal. I think they brought little bits of elements from each of the trilogy. I mean, and I've already told you as I feel like I'm kind of pulling little stretching too much with the third. But I mean, of course, the storyline they really got from the first one. But like little elements of like, you know, her having to cut off her arm and and, you know, everything like that element i felt like from the second evil dead movie and i felt when they had like that little water scene in the basement and you know her putting the chainsaw on her hand and everything of course like i got that from you know army of darkness like i just felt like every little detail in that movie was so perfect and you can tell that bruce campbell really was like okay we're gonna add little random details like they had at one point the original car that they drove in just as oh, part of the that. setting. Like when uh, the the main protagonist girl that ends up getting possessed in the remake of Evil Dead, like she's ending up sitting and like sketching on the car. I was just like, oh my God. Because that was a Sam Raimi thing. That was that that yes. car was like in every fucking movie he did. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. And it was really cool that they brought it to there. They had at one point um during the ending credits, they played like the original tapes that they had playing in the first Ooh. movie. Like okay. it was like, oh, I make sure to stay to the whole fucking like I was I was annoying them. People were like, okay, it's time to go. It's like, nope, I'm watching the ending. <laughs> but um, I thought they did a fantastic job with that. Even like the little bits of of like the special effects where like the one of the girls is throwing up, it people thought, oh, that would look stupid or whatever. And it's like if you look back at the Evil Dead series, it wasn't like, oh, okay, it's throw up. It's this like weird orangey red substance, and they matched it perfectly the to what the second Evil Dead movie had, in my opinion. But yeah. that's just me being a a deadeyed or a Evil Dead fan. <laughs> but uh, um, I thought that movie was great. Evil Dead Rises, like I said, it was a good movie for itself. I. It didn't make sense that it's like, okay, now the, the, the Necronomicon is found in this random city in like a parking garage or some shit. And now the mom is possessed. And it's just like, it was like, but, but what? What are we like doing said, here? <laughs> the, the concept itself, like the, the, the scares and everything. I mean, they... The scares were scaring, but it was just not an Evil Dead movie to me. All right, fair enough. I uh, yeah, I still need to go back and, and check those out just because I mean I I love love the Evil Dead movies. Oh, I almost yeah. feel, I feel embarrassed to say I haven't seen the new ones, but I'm like I'm that OG. I am XLJ the OG for a reason, so I'm all about the original. Absolutely. So, just saying. Um, let's talk about one of your let's talk about what your favorite era of films is or one of your favorite eras which you know we we've had a long discussion and of course we've had on previous episodes of y'all know i love the 80s that's my favorite genre of like 80s films or, or, or of horror films is is the 80s but for you i find it interesting because yours is actually in the 2000s right yeah i mean one of course with me specifically growing up in that time period too, you know, of course I'm going to gravitate to some more of the horror movies with then. I mean, of course I can't forget the original, you know, like the 80s slashers and everything. Of course that's going to hold a place near and dear to me. I mean, come on, Freddie, come on. But I don't know. It was just something about the time period, especially the early two thousands that ended up like putting out quite a bit of really good, like gems just you know random little ones i mean even just for example like i really liked the ring series you know they had like the the new age of slashers in that time you know the late 90s early 2000s like with ghost face and um just a lot of different ones that had more of that like they brought this they brought more suspense along with like the 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 killing aspect of a slasher movie 
And I definitely appreciate that. I think, I think that's why that's gotta be like my favorite era, even though I'll still always hold 80 slashers near and dear to me. That's that's fair enough. I think also in that time frame too, I mean, you mentioned ring. That was a massively popular film. Uh, and the Japanese versions too. Holy shit! That you're reading my mind. That's what I was gonna say. I feel like the a lot of the Japanese horror films, which is a huge, huge uh, uh, genre there in Japan, with like their horror films are just like holy shit, next level. But I think that's the first time that time frame in the 2000s is when you start to see that genre kind of creep in, so to speak, in, in yeah. North America and stuff. Uh, because yeah, like you said, grudge. you had the ring, you had the grudge, uh, and then so many other different like uh, influences and stuff that's been pieced together here and there. Um, what's some of the other ones from that time frame that you really liked in the two thousands? Um, all the way, I guess technically this is late nineties, but um, we can go there. Yeah, you know, still. um, I like any. I love the whole found footage thing. I mean, of course. So, I mean, I I loved the Blair Witch Project series. I know. I mean, with some people, it's like, oh, it's so lame. But I think for me personally, and I'm putting myself out there. Okay, I'm gonna embarrass myself a little bit. You guys are gonna find out some fun facts. But um, so from the time I was about eight years old till I was like 13, I thought the Blair Witch Project was real. And I literally, my eight-year-old through 13-year-old mind would on and off do research, be like, okay, well, I got to visit the Black Hills one day. I'm going to find out who this is. And so I'm starting to figure out like, okay, you know, let me type in, you know, all right, who's Ellie Kedward? And it's like, so yeah, they made that up because, (laughs) which here's a fact about the movie, the name Ellie Kedward was actually the name Edward Kelly mixed around. I guess it was like one of the producers or someone of the Blair Witch. So they just got it from that. But I was just like, Mm. wait a minute. So this is bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I was so mad at myself, but let me ask you a question. Were you more crushed when you found that out or when you found out Santa Claus wasn't real? Ooh, honestly, (laughs) I think I was, I was let down pretty easy with the whole Santa thing. I think I was more disappointed about the Blair Witch. (laughs) Fair enough. I was very disappointed with with that. Hell, the way I found out that Santa wasn't real was there was the year that I got my GameCube. And that was from, you know, my parents. But then all of a sudden I got a game from Santa and my dad was like, oh, yeah, we picked that out when we got the GameCube. I'm like, but yeah. Santa. Fucking up the illusion here. I'm like, okay. Well, okay. now we know. But yeah, definitely. Still not a soul like, crushing about the Blair Witch. Stuff. That was heartbreaking. <laughs> Years of research for a kid. Oh God! You know what's funny is like that time frame because I remember it very well because at that time I'm a teenager essentially, uh, and I just remember like being like I was more old school and stuff, and I just at the time I was just kind of like, oh, this stuff's kind of lame or whatever. But it's funny because now I can look back on it in hindsight now that it's like twenty some years later. It's right. like, hey, this is this is kind of a fun error, you know, of horror yeah. films like. Uh, I mean, some of the ones we've already mentioned, um, you know, Jeepers Creepers was really popular that time frame. Oh, my God. That's one of my favorites from that time period. I can't believe I didn't even mention that. Love oh, yeah. that movie. Um, Love that you movie. got everything from that to Joyride. Uh, I, that was a good one. Candy Cane. Candy Cane. <laughs> Rust and nail. <laughs> uh, I can, and, and I can remember too, like uh, some of, I think this may have been later on. This may have been more like 2006 ish, maybe even later than that. Uh, but kind of, I just, I kind of all classified into that new era of horror films and stuff. Yeah. But there was one from overseas, High Tension. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. That that That's that was a pretty solid, solid film. Like definitely scary. And they also, you know, they're doing, of course, like anything in Hollywood, like always the remakes and stuff. And the, 
There was some bad fucking remakes in this time frame too, like the I'm talking to you, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, uh, the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Like, although oh. maybe that was later on in the 2010. I think that was like maybe so. 2010. Question still mark? though, it sucked. It's still it's. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Jack Hero Haley, but but there is only no. one Freddy Krueger, and his name is Robert exactly. Englund. Exactly. I'll say, honey, you don't have to be sorry. That was ass. <laughs> You're, they're not going to use an old Voldemort mask and and put burn holes in it and call it Freddy Krueger. No. Yeah. This Robert England, that is Freddy Krueger. Preach. <laughs> like one hundred percent. Like. Uh... And I think that's the thing, too, is like some of these remakes have just been ass. But I mean, there is times in horror films where the remake they do is just as good, if not better. Like, especially yeah. if you look if you look early on with horror films, like uh, some of the first ones that come to my mind. Uh, it, and this is one of my scariest films of all time. It's up there um, with a couple. But uh, the John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah, that was a yeah. remake. But fuck, that blew the original thing out of the water. I mean, the, yeah. the, uh, just the creepiness of this and the, the visuals of that. And that thing was made in the 80s, and that shit still holds up to this day as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, um, God, I, that, that's definitely one of my scariest. Like, what? Yeah, let's talk about that. What is, like, some of your all-time, like, to just scare the bejesus out of you? Um, well, the first one that ever did, and I talked to you about this already, was the first one that gave me nightmares was no pun intended, Nightmare on Elm Street. I like the second time I saw it, I don't know, it wasn't the first, but the second time I saw it, I was up all night. I was seeing shadows on our our like windows and stuff like that, thinking that it was eyes. I'm like, no, Freddie's gonna come get me. I can't do this. <laughs> Um, after Mom. I finally, after I finally conquered Freddy, my next biggest, <laughs> scariest movie for a long time was The Exorcist. Oh, that okay. I had begged That's and begged there. and begged my parents to let me watch. I was, I was the uh, lovely age of ten <laughs> at this point. I'm like, you guys have seen so many, and you know, I feel like I can handle it, and I like. It was, again, one of those times where I was like, I, I researched, like, trailers. I was trying to hype myself up. I'm like, yeah, I can really handle this movie. And when the day came, I couldn't handle that movie. <laughs> it was just, oh. Uh, and, I mean, still to this day, there's some parts where I cannot watch, like, during her whole exorcism part. Where, like, there's a part where after he's throwing holy water and he kind of stops and it's just a angle of her just rising up and just this weird little grin can't watch it still can't watch it and then another part is where like her face is starting to boil a little and she's looking at the camera can't look at that still 32 can't look at that shit still <laughs> um another ones that kind of freaked me out we've talked about this one already and guys as soon as i say this don't look it up i there will be movies that I'll recommend for you to watch. This is not one of them. It is called Girl Next Door. Not like, oh, cute girl next door. You know, you know, pretty girl that's going to, you know, fall in love with the boy. No, 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 no. That's not what the fuck this is. It is a movie based off true events. It is sadistic. It's disgusting. It's awful. I've only seen it once. I've seen some fucked up shit. I will never watch that movie again. I've, and we've already talked about this, but it's like, you guys, I've seen movies like Cannibal Holocaust. I've seen all of the, the uh, Human Centipede movies. I've seen I Spit on Your Grave, including the original and all the three other ones in recent years that they made. ABCs of Death, Faces of Death. I mean, I've seen some shit. I will never, ever watch that movie again. Ever. Ever. That speaks volumes. <laughs> I mean... High volume, like definite. I mean, honestly, I've never seen it before, but um, yeah, if you, you're telling me all this, I'm like, nope, I don't think I want any part of that. It like I almost like it was so bad, I almost cried. I almost stopped a friendship over the person who had me watch this movie. I'm like, no, I. Why would you even fucking show me this? It's like I'm coming over to have a good time, <laughs> and this is the movie you fucking put on. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm leaving. <laughs> 
I, oh God, I, mm, horrible. I still, even just with seeing it once, there's scenes that are vivid. Anytime I talk about that will play in my head. It's awful. It's awful fucking movie. Well made, but awful. (laughs) Yeah. I, fuck. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to watch it. Shit. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the conversations I loved having you about with horror films, and I love having this with anybody, but like, what are some of your hidden gems? Because there is so many hidden gems yeah. out there for horror films. Like, I think there's so many that people miss out on, especially like from way back in the day or whatever. Um, well, a gem I already mentioned earlier, I forgot it's The Haunting or A Haunting, one of those two, it's black and white. Um, Strange Land, a movie made by D. Snyder from Twisted Let's Sister. Go. That is probably my top hidden gem that I will always mention. Be like, hey, you know what? If you want to see something fucking crazy, you will love this movie. I mean, I love everything down to the fucking soundtrack of the movie. I love, love that movie. Very well done. Very creepy. Um, Yeah. That's a hidden gem. Um, more of a B-rated one, and I've said this one to you quite a few times, but um, Secrets of the Clown. It is a B, very B-rated, so just to preface you guys, but it's, it, of course, it's supposed to be, like, scary-ish, but it's just a gem of a B-rated movie. I love that. Um... Let's see. Oh, a random one that I had came across. I think it was just part of like an anthology type of thing because it's only an hour long. But it's called The Fair-Haired Child. Hmm. Um, found it randomly at like one of those like kind of thrift store type of shops that just had a bunch of like old CDs and old DVDs. And I was like, ooh, interesting. And love that. Um I don't know if this is so much hidden, but I feel like if you guys are going to try and get into the, I don't know why I'm recommending this, but uh, if uh, you guys are willing to take the time to watch the I Spit on Your Grave movies, like the recent one starting from 2010, or I'm sorry, 2010 or 2013, regardless, from then on, you have to watch the original. There's some parts in that movie that are better than the remake. I feel like some of the emotions and raw feeling is a lot more apparent in that movie, not just, oh yeah, well, I'm going to take revenge. It's like you get that humility moment with Camille Keaton playing that character. Like, it was just phenomenal. I haven't, however, seen the uh, um, the sequel to that, which is called uh, Deja Vu. It's a, I spent on your grave Deja Vu or some shit, or just called Deja Vu. Mm. It's interesting the uh, story behind that but i uh i haven't seen that one yet that's the only one i haven't seen from the series but i feel like that one if you're going to get into that you have to watch the og first um yeah i think that's all i can think of right now for oh, those are some good oh, ones faculty. oh yeah you have to watch oh, faculty. The fa- from the 90s yeah that's yes, a great you have great to one. watch the faculty that one is one of those like on the edge of your seat type of like horror movies that is just like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And like, I remember the first time seeing it, it could be completely sideswiped of like who the actual like person was bringing this like virus thing in and like being saved by the school drug dealer, technically <laughs> like it was just <laughs> fucking amazing movie. So That's yes, that, I will. I think I'll end that with my hidden gems at the moment. That's pretty good. though. That's a solid list. Um, I've had some over the years. I'm like, I, I continue. I will preach about these films like uh, from a rooftop. One of the first ones that comes to my mind was uh, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Ooh. That one is like, oh, man. Like you get uh, Michael. Um, oh, God, I can't think of his name. Uh, I always forget his name. From uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, and he, he was in uh, Army of the De- or Army of the uh, not uh, Dawn of the Dead there or Dawn no not Dawn 
fuck walking dead jesus my brain was like oh, uh, okay. uh, uh, earl like i can't think of his name but anyways um that one's always uh, always been a great because it's just eerie like the realism is because it's based kind of loosely off of like the egg gein stuff and like, yeah just like serial killers like if a serial killer like in the 80s um existed it would be it would be henry it's like that's super trippy super trippy movie um i also like the cheesy like over the top of ridiculous course. um one of the ones that i love is hobo with the shotgun Oh my god. Hobo, have you ever seen Hobo with a shotgun? I don't think we've actually one. talked yes. about Hobo with a shotgun. Yeah, I've seen it once. That okay. that movie's a hell of a trip. <laughs> it's it's yeah. Yeah, it's something else. Like just the over the top violence is just like ridiculous. It's like imagine if like Machete was like a horror movie. Like that's kind of the best way to describe it. That is so accurate. Oh my god! Fucking Rucker <laughs> Hauer. Oh my god, Rucker Hauer in this movie is incredible. Like he, I loved Rucker Hauer, but this to me is like one of his best movies, in my opinion. And he had a great body of work, but um, in that kind of same vein too, I, I wouldn't. Say, this isn't a hidden gem, but this is a definitely a must watch. I think every October. Uh, but in that genre is, and, and I love this because I had the privilege of going to see this in theaters. The Grindhouse Experience, the Tarantino Ooh. and uh, Rodriguez flicks, like Terror Firmer, yes. uh, along with um, Death Proof and the trailers in between. Oh my god, such a great, fun cinematic experience. It's Absolutely. funny because I watched those. Like at first, I was really kind of into Death Proof, was my favorite of them. But now as I watch them each year, it's like I find myself more into Terror Firm or, the, or okay. Planet Terror, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's a good one. But not not a hidden gem, but just a great freaking horror uh, films you need to definitely watch and see. Um, another one for me, and I don't know if this is really truly like a, a hidden hidden gem because this has like a... It's definitely a cult classic. But I always loved dead alive or brain dead oh uh, wow the uh one of peter jackson's first films he ever did uh and and a lot of people for don't realize that with peter jackson he made some fucked up movies like to start off his career yes this is right. the same lord of the rings peter jackson i'm talking about um but oh my god like dead alive is so good and just like the whole stuff with like uh, I kick ass for the Lord. That was like one of my favorite lines of all like any fucking movie <laughs> with the minister oh, God, like yes. fighting the zombies in like a graveyard. Oh, if that doesn't sell you on that movie, I don't know what the fuck will in all honesty. Um, oh, man, there's just there, there's there is a countless amount. Uh, another one I got to mention this, even though it's not it, this is kind of more of a comedy horror. But uh, in my opinion, I think this is Bruce Campbell's best role he's ever done outside of Evil Dead, uh, Bubba Hotep. Oh, Bu wow. Bubba Hotep is a really good flick. Yes. Like uh, where <laughs> the premise of this is like Elvis is in a retirement home, still alive. Of course, Elvis being played by uh, the great Bruce Campbell. And then you have Ozzie Davis, the late great Ozzie Davis, playing the role of JFK, who is apparently a, a african-american man in um a nursing home and they have to fight off an evil mummy that comes to possess old people's souls <laughs> so here you go i mean you know what, what more do you need to know it's a great great fucking what movie do you right need, there. really what more do you need <laughs> yeah you don't, you don't need much i mean come on no. um another one i gotta give like now this once again not so much a hidden gem i don't think but just this one I always got to watch this time of year. I fucking love Return of the Living Dead. Love oh, yeah. that movie. So fucking good. Um, God, man, that that one, the, the soundtrack on that movie is incredible. Just the whole story. Like, it's it's honestly probably my favorite zombie flick. And I'm talking about, I'm sorry, no disrespect, George. Like, your dead series is incredible, but for, for me, it's always going to be that one. Um, some other ones, I just I just had a couple pop up in my uh, 
Me too. My, yeah, right. Go no, go ahead. Go go ahead. What's some of oh, no, you got? No, 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 seriously, go ahead, because I just lost him then. Go ahead. Okay. Um, a series that I feel like people really should check out. And I think all three of the movies are on. Actually, they just put out like a fourth one, but it's the Hell House series. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's I thought it was really, really good, especially for because I mean when it comes to like more recent horror films and stuff, some of them are really hit and miss. So the fact that they did a full series and they all very much stand well on their own as well as a series together, I felt that was a fantastic one that people, not a lot of people talk about it, but I feel like people should. It's really good. Yeah. It's pretty much, you know, this guy who him and his buddies, um, they have like a haunted attraction thing that they do each year. They've had not really good luck with other places. So they get a deal in this little random town and get this hotel that has a lot of really fucked up history and a lot of, a lot of crazy things happen, but, and they've made that into a trilogy. Well, now a, I guess they have added a fourth movie since, which is called oh, okay. the Carmichael Manor, but um, which is more of like some origin of some of the stuff that went down in the actual Abaddon Hotel. But yeah, that is a great one. People need to check out Hidden Gem for me. And then an actual hidden gem that is more of like a comedic horror film, not even really meant to be like purposely B-rated, I don't think. It's called Mortuary. <laughs> and there's... um. I believe it's on Tubi as well. So if you guys want to check it out, uh, definitely recommend it's, it's kind of corny with some of the stuff, but I don't know. Some of the stuff just makes me kind of giggle in the movie. And it is, it does have those parts where it's like, Oh my God, suspense, but <laughs> it's definitely more on the side of funny. But yeah, I just remembered those two. <laughs> nice. Um, couple that came, just came to mind to me. Um, there was one from the eighties. Just it's ridiculous over the top. Like it's a, a typical like horror film from that genre, but uh Night of the Demons. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, it's so good. Absolutely. Like, with the visuals in that, and like I just remember yes. like the, the, the satanic like voice that the main character had. Oh man, still scares the bejesus out of me. Shit. Uh that is a great one. Another one, because I love me some Clive Barker. Like, I mean, Hellraiser, one of my favorite series. Yes. But he did a film, uh, Nightbreed. Oh, which wow. Which is unlike okay. other, any other horror movie. It's still, it's it's kind of in the, I don't know. I don't consider it really that scary. I mean, the visuals are pretty creepy. But the premise of the story is incredible, really. Like, it's not what you would expect. Because really, it's like the horrific characters in this film are actually the humans. It's not so much like the, the mutants. So yeah, it's Nightbreed's a dope ass movie. I would highly recommend checking that shit out. That's definitely a good one uh, to add to your list. So, uh, but we could go on and on about hidden gems, oh, for sure. but I want to play a little game with you right now. Uh, like, uh, I want to play a game. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Why am I in shackles? <laughs> What's up my neck? <laughs> uh, um, 60 seconds, I can't count. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've highlighted some famous horror film franchises here. And okay. I want you to pick out what is the best film of the franchise. So Ooh. we'll start. We'll start off easy. Let's let's talk. Okay. Halloween. I know this is basic as hell, but it's the first one for me. It is the first I, one, hands down. I yep. liked a few of the others. I didn't mind the second one either. Um, How do you feel about Season of the Witch? Because that's kind of a touchy subject. I was actually people. just about to bring that up. That's crazy. Um, I thought it was okay. Um. I feel like, although, yes, I mean, obviously Michael was in the movie too, Doug, but I just feel like it was so, like, storyline-wise, kind of separate. I don't know. It was just, like, a real far stretch. Yeah. But, I mean, hell, I mean, I feel that way with 
I mean, after that movie on with all of the Halloween movies, it's like, Jesus Christ, let this man die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's even like, God damn, Lori, please kill me. I can't take this fucking, shit anymore. <laughs> just fucking do it. <laughs> um, all right. I already know the answer to this. We both know our answers on this one, but let's go with it. Uh, on your shirt there, Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, I could do the basic answer of the first one, but I mean that's that's a typical answer. That's the incorrect but answer. Us, the intellectuals, we are dream warriors. It's number three by far. I've that has been my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie for fucking decades. Like I so good. love so oh, fucking good. Oh God, yeah, just. Everything behind it, like everyone getting their chance to like become their like versions of how they want to be in the dream and and the kills. Oh my god, you guys, if you haven't seen the third, like one of my favorite kills from that movie, it is so oh, it makes my wrist like all gross. But are we talking the puppet? Yes, we are talking yeah. about the puppet, where yeah. the one young man who's because I mean, mind you, this is all taking place in like a like a psych ward. You know, because all these kids are, you know, they're going through some shit. And our main protagonist girl, she is, you know, experiencing seeing Freddy and stuff like that. And all these people are, right? So, but anyway, this young man, he is falling asleep, you know, unfortunately. And he had a puppet in his room that ended up turning into the man on my shirt. And ended up kind of creating him as a puppet. But... He didn't use strings. No, no. He used his tendons. Ugh. And yeah. just rising him up as he's like walking it until pretty much his death. Everyone thought he, you know, took his own life by, you know, fall, what was it like out a window or some shit or yeah. balcony? Yeah, he right? jumped. Yeah. Yeah. And oh my God. It was just, oh God. It just that is so gross. And, you know, like so many iconic moments from that movie, you know, it's prime time, bitch. Like, is my like incredible fucking line. Like, yeah. I love that movie so much. So, hands down. Yeah. Third. Yeah. Third one is the best. Best of the best. The creme de la creme. Uh, Friday the 13th. Ooh. Wow. I'll be honest. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of Friday the 13th. Um, not my favorite of the slashers. So I'll have to go basic with this one and say the first one. Uh, first and second one, I think I enjoy the best. Yeah, I no, that's a fair. I mean, I've seen them and I would I would say probably uh, more than one for me. Yeah, I think two because of the reveal you get, and then like I think. You could like three. You get him in the mask for the first time, which and it's yeah, cheesy as fuck. The whole movie. Four. Good. I tell you, a guilty pleasure I have in that series, and people hate this fucking movie. Uh, not as much as Jason X, though, because anytime you put people in space or horror movie characters in space, it never fucking works. Um. J. Um. Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight. Jason takes Manhattan. Okay. So, so, it's so fucking cheesy. It's just great seeing Jason go through fucking Manhattan. And it's just like, you know, you got the scene where like the guys are listening to their boom box or whatever. And he just like fucking breaks the boom box and shit. And I just love the scene on the rooftop where one of the main characters is like boxing Jason. He's like, come on, motherfucker. Come on. And then Jason hits him like just with one fucking uppercut. And he like knocks <laughs> his entire fucking head off. Oh my god, so good. Uh, but I would say, yeah, I'm I'm gonna lean more towards two probably on this one. Yeah. But but any of the first four I think are are, are yeah. a pretty solid pick in my opinion. So, all right, I think this one may be more in your wheelhouse because we're going to the 2000s era, oh, and oh this boy. was a franchise I can't believe oh, we haven't no. really talked about yet. What about okay. Saw? Oh, God, I knew you were going to ask that. God, my favorite Saw movie. Um, wow. 
Um, I like number two. Okay. I like the concept of the story of that one. Um, you know, taking Detective Matthew's son and, you know, like all he had to do was fucking listen. Just stay in the room and just listen. If he would have stayed until the timer went off, his son was in the goddamn safe. He just had to wait. But no, you know, he had a beat up John Kramer. He had, oh, take me to the house. Take me to the house. It's like, there's rules, sir. And you had to, all you had to do was listen. All you had to do was listen. And uh, a funny, funny moment from the movie that I love is when he asks him for water and he's just like sh <laughs> shaking his head and he's like, Kylie, can you get me a glass of water? <laughs> Actually, I don't know why it makes me laugh so much, but I like the second movie. I mean, of course I like the first movie too, but my favorites, the second movie, the fourth, I know this is how I'm going doing like all the even number movies, but I like the second one. I like the fourth one. Um, honestly, I didn't mind, honestly, four through six, like, like storyline wise. I mean, it was like a lot, but still pretty good. Um, and I'll be honest, I actually really liked the, uh, I didn't mind Spiral. I don't consider that part of the fucking series, though. Um, but I liked Jigsaw that one that they came out with where it was supposed oh, to be yeah. like a before everything. I thought that was really well done for what the movie was. I feel like the storyline got me. I was like, Whoa, like, I mean, and from like everything I've seen, it's not really hard or it's hard to really like shock me with certain things. It's like, I can usually pretty catch on with, but I mean, it was just how they did that movie. It was like, okay, I can, I can mess with that. But I think from that series, those would have to be to pick my favorite from all of those. I would have to go with number two because I watch that one more regularly than any other Saw movie. OK, that's fair. Uh, for me, I'd probably say the first one. Yeah. But this is going to probably shock, maybe offend some people. I just never really got into the Saw movies like I, I saw the first three and I've never seen any of the others. It's honest to God truth. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, you're I not just, really was, missing much. I was <laughs> just kind of like, okay, it's like kind of a rinse repeat, which I know a lot of horror films are like that, but I don't know. Like I guess I'm more, I'm more old school. What can I say? Um, last one I want to ask you about Hellraiser. What do you think is the best Hellraiser? Hands down, the first one. There's no the first question. First one's about can't that. Be Second There's one's no great. Question. But the first one, oh my god, like Jesus uh, wept, like oh, right? Oh right? my, like, it's like oh my fucking god, that movie scared like, the like, shit out of me as a kid. That's oh still god. that's still one of those ones to me that gives me chills as well. Like we're talking about movies that, yeah, that Hellraiser is right up there. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to beat the first one, man. Oh, for so. sure. Oh. Well, now I want to play another game. With, I want to play another game with you. No. Um, <laughs> This one, <laughs> this one is definitely in your wheelhouse because, as we know, outside of the world of uh, horror films, you, you love your deathmatch wrestling. Me? Like, yeah, you. <laughs> uh, so I want to play this game with you, and I want to take the these iconic horror film characters, horror films, and put them in death matches and who would win. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Up first, we're going to take Art the Clown against Pennywise. A battle of the clowns to kick us off. Okay. What God, kind of death match really do you think? Do you, do you think they would be a a specific death match they would be in or do you think it's just like fuck it it's just that they're all they're i feel like it would match. be an actual real death match like yeah death yeah on the de <laughs> not just um, a light tube match no 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 this is gonna oh happen. no this is like <laughs> anything sharp goes i feel like that would be the title of this death match for them okay um god um I feel like if we're just going off of a death match and not using like, you know, outworldly sources, like how Pennywise, you know, he could change into the spider and all that stuff. I feel like just with sheer grotesque 
being alone, I think Art would actually win that one. And it's hard for me to say, like, okay. wait, are we to which which Pennywise are we to, are we talking OG Pennywise? Are Ooh. we talking Bill Skarsgård Pennywise? That's that's a good that's a good question. Um, well, you and I've had this discussion about Pennywise. Both are great, but I think we the it, it's always going to be Tim Curry oh, for of us. Course. So let's say that Tim Curry Pennywise against Art. <sighs> I think I'm still going to go with Art because he already is so notoriously known to just be so gruesome and bloody. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be definitely his wheelhouse to win that shit. I agree with you. Yeah. Okay. Who would win in a death match? Jigsaw versus Chucky. Ooh. I'm going to go with Chucky. Okay. Because I feel like Jigsaw or, or Jiggy, if you will, um, he's more so, I guess, really just sort of just literally like the puppet for John Kramer. So I don't feel like he would offer much into a death match, even though he probably have some games and try and get, you know, Chucky like, you know, trapped in something or have his head, you know, into some type of device that'll go off in 90 seconds. But <laughs> I think, I think Chucky would be able to take that. Yeah. I think I, I agree with you in that assessment. I think Chucky would probably win as well. Touche. All right. These are the three big matchups for this. Oh, God. Uh, all right. This next one, we got a triple threat coming at you. So, who would who would win a death match between Michael Myers, Pinhead, and Leatherface? Leatherface, one hundred. Oh, okay. I like you. Were, you really? Okay, let's hear it. Um, I just feel like he has so much grit to him. Yeah. He has that. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to harm, damage anything that comes in my way or my family's way. Like he is just, he he's he's a bad motherfucker. You know, I feel like he would definitely, definitely win between the two. I feel like he would pin Michael though. Oh, okay. I feel like he would end up feuding think- with Pinhead afterwards, being like, "Well, <laughs> you didn't pin me. I, you know, <laughs> so." You will tear your soul apart. No. Yes. Um, is is Leatherface like the Cactus Jack of like horror films? Maybe. Ooh, that's a good one. That? <laughs> that's good. Can you imagine Leatherface, baby? <laughs> With this fucking chainsaw. <laughs> but instead of yeah. baby, it's like ving ving. Like. <laughs> uh, that would be wonderful. Oh my god! Yeah, that's a great analogy. I like that. I'm never gonna oh. forget that now. We're going to clip it. Um, <laughs> all right. Semi main event here. Who would win a death match between these two different errors? Definitely different genres, but two big menacing power. Like, you know how we talk about the meat slap of meat? That's what this one is. Oh, God. I'm scared. Frankenstein versus Jason. I know, right? Honestly, I feel like Jason would definitely win. You know, no hate to Frankenstein. I just, I feel like, I mean, Christ, Jason has been around for so long. I feel like he would just be able to just get any type of knowledge to go into a death match. It's like, as he silently looks at light tubes and shit. No, he'd bring his machete and, uh, Game over. Game over. Game over. Game oh. over. All right, Carly, here you go. Your main event. Oh, my the God. Dream matchup. A matchup that has been teased and talked about for years. And it's going to be a tough one for you to choose, I think. Because oh, we're taking, man. in your main event, the ultimate battle of good versus evil. Freddy Krueger versus Ash. I 
As soon as you said good versus evil, I fucking knew Ash was going to be in there. Oh, man. Wow. I know. Your two, your two favorites here. Oh, man. All right. Let me cover his burned ears. Ash is going to win. And here's why. I just feel, I mean, he's the ultimate weapon man himself. He's got a boomstick. He's got a chainsaw. I mean, he's even harmed himself and, and survived. I mean, like, come on, cutting off your own hand. Come on, that's badass. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, he can invade dreams and stuff, but this is a death match, Freddie, you know? It, this isn't this isn't dream world. It's a death match. That's right. And uh, Ash is gonna Ash will win that one. I'm sorry, Freddie. I'm sorry, but <laughs> Ash is gonna win that one. <laughs> solid, solid picks, and I think uh, would be all tremendous matchups. Would love oh, to God, see. Yeah, that was a great, great question. My God. Right. Well, as we're coming down to the end of this episode of Cole Cast, it's that age old question, Carly. What is your Mount Rushmore horror films? Okay. Well, one. Oh, geez. Okay. So I think number one is going to have to be The Shining because that's the first horror movie I ever watched. It is the movie that got me into Jack Nicholson. It is, I feel like just that movie in general holds such an importance to me that literally help me shape who the hell I am today. <laughs> um, so there's that. I'm going to okay. say again for the millionth time on just talking about on here, the haunting that movie was just for suspense, no gore, no bullshit, just literal fear instilled. I will always, always love that movie. And I always will recommend that to people for life um number three i mean we've talked about it again too um i'll have to just put the evil dead series if i have to pick one i'll just pick evil dead it's okay that we, we can Rushmore. cheat we can cheat here a little if you want to put the whole okay. series in there that's fine all right so the trilogy and then for number four Oh, number four would have to be. I think I'll have to go with another Stephen King and go with the original It. Oh, I, I nice. To, I, I have like to. it. I like it a yeah. lot. That's 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 a great pick. Those Although are I'm sure my list will change throughout, but you know, yes. for, I yes. think for a solid of my favorites, my Mount Rushmore of always will be good, no matter what. Those. I think for me, and once again, this is our. This is your list. This is our list. This isn't like we're saying these are the greatest horror, but like for us, this is what we enjoy. I would say for me, I'm gonna go the the, the thing. I have to have John Carpenter's The Things on there. Along with Return of the Living Dead, I just adore that movie. Um, hmm. The other two. Hmm. Okay, this is one I forgot to mention, but this movie freaks me the fuck out. Like, it's a, from, uh, I think, 1931 or 32, Todd Browning's The uh, Freaks. Freaks oh, is wow, a really yeah. fucked up one. Yeah, yeah. I just think of the image where the, the freaking, the, 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 um, person that's got like no limbs pretty much is army yeah. crawling and has like the the freaking knife in their mouth and stuff it's, it's like crazy that you've seen that it's uh, it's one of those ones that people have no idea what the fuck that movie is like right yeah and i i'm gonna go with one of my hidden gems uh actually i kind of almost want to do a tie because i almost want to say nightmare three but I gotta give I gotta give love Ooh. to Dead Alive. I think I would put in there. I just I love Dead Alive so damn much. Yeah. Such Nightmare Three movie. will have to be in one of my honorable mentions. Yeah. Nightmare Three definitely would be an honorable mention uh for me. So but all oh, great films. And seriously, if you haven't seen any of these flicks, um, which I'm sure you see most, but I'm sure there's a lot we talked about today too 
that you haven't seen, you should definitely go check them out. Go find them on Tubi. You can find them, I'm sure, on like uh, Shutter. You can find yeah. them on like other different streaming uh, platforms. You know, just just look it up. You you kids are blessed with the gift of having a little this little phone device that you can just type something in and look it up and find it. So, would definitely encourage you to do that. But um, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a oh, fun no, of episode. Course. This was fun. Absolutely had a blast. And as we always do here on uh, Colcast, we got to do a little plug a palooza. So, Carly, tell us where they can find you. Well, you can find me on TikTok at cakeface underscore Carly. I am on Instagram as cakeface underscore Carly 2.0. I talk about game changer wrestling, deathmatch wrestling. I also do makeup on there. So, if that's in your wheelhouse of fun stuff you're into, go ahead and check me out there. I'm also part of the amazing team of World Championship Wreckage on the World Championship Wreckage YouTube channel. You know, TMB and T for life. <laughs> and then I am also the resident GCW Bessie for PW60 here on Gold TV. And if you don't watch horror movies, you have to because horror movies save lives. Yes, they do. Put it out there. Put it out there. Facts. All facts. Well, thank you so much for joining us here on Polecast, the Horror Effect Part 4. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Polecast.